Will current or soon to be retirees lose their Social Security benefits? I think 55 million retirees will vote out of office any politician who supports stopping Social Security. So rather than discussing losing Social Security, let's focus on getting more from Social Security by making the right decisions. Hello, I'm Dr. Shelby Smith of the Retirement Pros, and today I'd like to talk about getting more from Social Security. Most people give little thought to Social Security decisions like when to start, maximizing spousal benefits, integrating with other retirement income, how benefits are taxed, or using Social Security rules to their advantage. The typical retiree simply says, I'm retiring and I'm taking my Social Security before it stops. Local Social Security offices give no advice on how you can maximize your family's lifetime income from Social Security. That's why over 70% of current Social Security recipients got it wrong and each will lose tens of thousands of dollars in lifetime benefits. You have only one chance to get Social Security right. So how that's done is very important. So if you've not started Social Security or you have started Social Security and you want to keep more of your benefits, I have some solutions for you. Unless disabled or your spouse has died, the earliest age you can start Social Security is 62. If less than full retirement age and still working, Social Security benefits will be reduced up to $1 for every $2 you make over $12,640 a year. That's the 2012 level and of course it changes annually. Full retirement age for Social Security is 66 if you were born between 1943 and 1954. Since Social Security is a lifetime benefit, starting younger means a smaller check and starting older means a bigger check. Benefits grow at an annual rate of about 7% for a year for each month delayed from age 62 to 66 and at an annual growth rate of 8% if delayed from full retirement age, that's age 66, to age 70. No growth is given for delaying beyond age 70. If you qualify for $12,000 at, say, age 62, delaying until 66 will raise that amount to $16,000, and delaying to age 70 raises benefits to $22,000. Benefits are increased yearly if there's been inflation. That's on top of your normal uh, increase for delaying. Social Security benefits are never fully taxed by the federal government and most states. Thus, it pays to delay and get a bigger check that is only partially taxed. If you are married, your spouse is entitled to receive the greater of, one, benefits based on their own work record, or two, 50% of what you're entitled to receive at normal retirement age. If a dependent spouse starts Social Security before reaching full retirement age, two bad things happen. First, their benefits are reduced for starting early. Second, they cannot later switch to benefits based on their own work record. If a dependent starts benefits after reaching full retirement age, both these bad things disappear. If you are married, healthy, and can afford it, Delaying Social Security is probably the best retirement move you can make because your family's lifetime income will be thousands of dollars higher. So those are kind of the rules of Social Security. So now let's look at some examples. We have a typical married couple, Mary and John, both age 66, recently retired, both enjoy good health, and have ample retirement savings to do without Social Security for a few years. So let's say Mary qualifies for $15,000 annual Social Security and John is entitled to $16,000. So what should they do? 
Well, most retiring couples would start Social Security and take the combined $31,000 annually. But this could be a big mistake. I'd say that Mary will outlive John by at least six years because females, the stronger gender, live longer. So instead of taking the $31,000, I'd recommend the following. Mary file for Social Security and start drawing $15,000 a year. John files as Mary's dependent and draws $7,500 a year. He's entitled to 50% of Mary's benefits. And since he's a full retirement age, he can later switch to benefits based on his own work record. John then postpones until age 70, and at age 70, he will get $22,000 a year. So combined, they'll now get $37,000 when John reaches age 70. If John dies first, Mary's benefits increase to $22,000 for the rest of her life. So as you can see, there's benefits in delaying in this case. So bear in mind that Social Security is increased yearly for inflation. Now the numbers I used did not account for the annual inflationary cost of living adjustment. If you assume 3% annual inflation, Mary and John's annual benefits are over $6,000 a year higher starting at age 70 and continue growing until they reach a positive difference of over $10,000 a year at age 86. And that's almost $1,000 a month. If Mary and John live to their life expectancy, their lifetime income from Social Security will be over $200,000 higher because Mary delayed benefits until full retirement age and John delayed until age 70. Plus, Mary has more late in life financial protection when she needs it most. You know, she may be John's caregiver, but for her, it could be a nursing home and the extra Social Security could make a big difference. Where else can you get 8% growth backed by a government promise, inflation protected, tax-favored income with comparable spousal benefits? And of course the answer is no place. Another example is married couple Bill and Jane. Bill just turned 66 and wants to continue working whereas Jane, age 62, does not qualify for Social Security as she did not work outside the home. At age 62, Jane is eligible for dependent benefits but cannot qualify until Bill actually starts his Social Security. Bill could start his Social Security without suffering the working penalty since he's at full retirement age, but since Jane is younger, he'd like to assure her larger benefits by delaying. So what can they do? Well, since Bill has reached full retirement age, he can file for Social Security and suspend. If Bill's benefits would be $16,000, then Jane's dependent benefits would be $6,000. Only about 37.5% of Bill's rather than the usual 50% because Jane started early at age 62. So Bill, in the meantime, is postponing and his benefits are growing. At age 70, when he gets the maximum benefits, he starts his Social Security. And this will provide Jane more financial security if he dies first as expected. Let's look at another example. Let's say Paul, age 63, was just laid off at work and actually needs to start taking his Social Security. He filed and started receiving benefits, but within a year, he was called back to work. If Paul works while getting Social Security, his benefits will be reduced because he's less than full retirement age. He can do without Social Security now that he's working again. So what can Paul do? Well, during the first year of receiving Social Security benefits, you can change your mind, pay back to Social Security without interest, the money your family received, and start later at a higher benefit. So up until recently, you could have changed your mind any time after receiving Social Security, pay back the money you got without interest, and then start over again at higher benefits. But the Social Security closed that free loan loophole in December of 2010. 
If you and your spouse are now getting Social Security but paying taxes on the benefits, what can you do? If you have earnings that are not needed but are reported as income, for example, interest on bank CDs or bonds, why not defer the income and reduce taxes on your Social Security? You can defer taxes with an annuity. You can convert IRA money to a tax-free Roth IRA or use several other safe strategies your financial advisor can tell you about. Taxes on Social Security can be reduced without taking risk and without losing control of your money. Remember, a dollar not paid in taxes is another dollar to enjoy in retirement. Let's say you and your spouse got Social Security right and will enjoy an extra $200,000 in lifetime income. However, the Social Security benefits you receive, and let's say those are $35,000 a year, will not be enough. You think you'll need $50,000 a year in constant inflation-adjusted dollars for the retirement you've planned. You have other assets, stocks, bonds, real estate, mutual funds, variable annuities, but all these things have one thing in common risk of loss. You need $15,000 in yearly guaranteed supplemental income to be paid regardless of future interest rates or market gyrations. What can you do? Well, outliving your money is called longevity risk and is the greatest fear of most retirees. What do you do when faced with a risk that's too big to assume? Your home being destroyed, car wrecked, serious illness, premature death, or other catastrophic loss? Well, you pay an insurance company to manage the risk by spreading it over thousands of policyholders. The small premiums paid are a great value for the peace of mind received. Insurance companies offer longevity insurance that guarantees a lifetime income, and unlike health or life insurance, there are no medical or health limitations. Everyone qualifies. The guaranteed lifetime income is a feature of certain tax-deferred annuities that your financial advisor can tell you about. The $15,000 a year Social Security supplemental income adjusted for inflation is easy to get, plus you'll have the flexibility in case you change your mind and want your money back rather than taking a guaranteed lifetime income. We've only explored some of the dark corners of the Social Security maze. I encourage you to learn more on your own by visiting the Social Security website at www.ssa.gov or meet with your financial advisor about getting your Social Security right. If you haven't yet started Social Security or started in the last year, you have time to make the right decisions. If you've already started Social Security, you should focus on reducing taxes on the benefits and locking up a Social Security supplemental income if outliving your money is a concern. Well, I hope all of you have a very long, happy, healthy, and financially secure retirement. Thanks for your time and have a good day.